Welcome to the third hour of our program. On the line with us, our old friend Lori Wallach, the uh, director of the Rethink Trade Program at the American Economic Liberties Project, also the senior advisor, Citizens Trade Campaign. RethinkTrade.org is the website. The uh, Twitter or X handle is Wallach Lori, uh, L O R I, W A L L A C H L O R I. And uh, Lori, welcome back to the program. I understand from uh, the, the uh, press release that I got from you a couple of days ago that these big tech firms that want to basically own artificial intelligence and use it for their own purposes and whatnot really don't want to be regulated. And they're trying to use some of these international trade deals to prevent that regulation. Is, is, am I correctly understanding what you're writing about? That's exactly right. What is happening is a play you have revealed from big corporations before. This time it's the big tech sector that wants to use its lobbyists and its money to, to rig trade agreements to basically handcuff Congress hmm. so that finally, as Congress and the Biden administration and the regulatory agencies realize they need to regulate these behemoths for their monopoly abuses, for their privacy abuses, for who knows what AI civil rights and civil liberties abuses will ensue. Just as that's starting, the companies realize, well, we're not going to win in front of Congress in public. Let's try the old Trojan horse. Now, um, my understanding... I'm sorry. They're trying to put new rules that would basically forbid regulation in trade agreements, even though they have nothing to do with trade. I get it. My understanding is that um, treaties actually supersede federal law. They become the, the kind of the supreme law of the land short of the Constitution. And, uh, but uh, these are being done as trade agreements, not as treaties. They don't require Senate ratification. Or am I wrong? What am I missing here? So these are what are called international executive agreements. They're not a full treaty, like the past trade agreements were not full treaties. And the great news is the Biden administration isn't doing the bad old trade deals like the NAFTAs. They're not doing the outsourcing incentives. They're not doing the bans on Buy America. They're not doing the corporate tribunals, the big pharma giveaways. But buried in the guts of a couple different trade initiatives, these big tech lobbyists put arcane, weaselly language that to the average reader doesn't seem like anything so bad. Take away the regulatory tools that are needed to get big tech on a leash. So here's just one example, Tom, and this is what you saw in the news release. We just did a report, and folks can see these reports at rethinktrade.org, rethinktrade, one word, dot org. It's a study that shows the number one thing that Congress and the regulatory agencies need to regulate AI is transparency. Mm -hmm. They need to look at the algorithms in advance and make sure they're not racially biased or they're not invading our civil liberties. What the tech firms want is a new rule buried in the trade agreements that forbid any government from requiring disclosure of even detailed descriptions of algorithms. Wow. And it's framed in language that makes you think it's, oh, trade secrets must be good for business. But what it is, is evading regulation. And the, the, the companies want to put three or four of those kind of rules buried in the hundreds of pages of trade language that basically they take away the ability of being held accountable. Now, when I, when I was working on it, when I wrote uh, th uh, this book, The Hidden History of Big Brother in America, I, 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 you know, I wrote at some length about the algorithms that are driving social media, for example, and how, how black box they are. We have no idea why it is that you know, conservatives do so well on Twitter and Facebook and liberals don't do so well. Um, but there are some indications that a lot of it has to do with how the algorithms are set up and they absolutely refuse to reveal these, saying that they're trade secrets. Um, are they taking the trade secret uh, path on the AI algorithms, too? So traits mean you, can, you have a right not to have your confidential business information disclosed to another company 
But a trade secret protection is what you get when you are required to give your information to the government, for instance, to show a drug is safe and effective or that a pesticide is not going to give cancer. So trade secrets protections is a different thing. That means like if I say, Tom, you've just created the best flavor of blah, blah, but the Food and Drug Administration needs to make sure it's safe. You send that to me. I have, you have trade secret protection as the creator of that. That me as the government, I can't show that's your competitor. Right. What this is is a step beyond. Mm. This is saying the government can't see it. The right. government can't make sure it's safe. And that's what they're – they already have trade secrets protections. That's already in the WTO. That's in U.S. law. No one's giving the information away. And, in fact, interestingly, all the countries in the world have that WTO obligation not to do it. This is about you can't regulate. Or here's another one that will just, you know, make your toes curl. <laughs> They've got a rule that gives the companies absolute guaranteed control over our data. And it literally says including personal data wow. as to where it can be stored, where it can be processed. Can you get it deleted? It explicitly forbids the governments from limiting the flows of data or limiting where it can be stored. And there's no even an exception for, like, infrastructure where you'd want, you know, you'd want certain really sensitive data not to be susceptible to cybercrime. Right. It's just given over so the government can't regulate. So these rules, they hope to slip into whatever trade negotiation gets done first. And they've been pushing this at the WTO, the big tech companies, for some years. Now they start trying to push it for the Indo-Pacific Economic framework, mm -hmm. which is a commercial negotiation the Biden administration is doing. They're pushing it for a U.S. There's a U.S. Taiwan commercial negotiation. They're trying to weasel it in there. It's like mushrooms after a rain. There's so many big tech lobbyists popping up with this nefarious language that basically what we all need to do, this only works, this kind of Trojan horse strategy only works if we're not aware. So we need to be running around with our mouths wide open, making sure our members of Congress our our local officials, because state law as well has privacy rules. We need to make sure everyone knows the stunt is afoot. They can't get away with it. So what what can the average person do? I mean, you know, we're not we're not participants in the trade agreements. They're not being uh, conducted or hammered out by our 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 legislators that we elect. They will uh, ultimately, I, I assume, have some say over them. But you know, in at least the ratification of them. But what what can we do? What who can I call? What can I say? You know, and and who are the companies who are pushing this stuff? It's the biggest of the big because they have the secrecy of the process, and they have a lot of official advisors in the trade advisory system, and it's all closed door, so it's easy to rig. And the people who can fix it are actually the members of Congress, not only because in the end they get to vote and have to decide, but also. They can shape the agreements. So here's the hmm. great news, Tom. Senator Warren, Senator Klobuchar, Senator Blumenthal, Congresswoman Schakowsky, before he left, Congressman Cicilline, Congressman Takano, they've all started weighing in with the administration saying, hey, be aware of this. Here's some sneaky stuff we think is getting slipped into these agreements. Mr. President, you went on the State of the Union and you used the word big tech and promised privacy for us and our kids would be safe, and you break up these outrageous monopolies that are abusing all the smaller companies. And guess what? These guys are trying a backdoor attack to basically commandeer negotiations about something totally different, even right. for once, like legit stuff, like supply chain security and decarbonization of the world economy. And they're trying to ram all these poison pills in there. And so literally... For everyone, it's very simple. You don't have to have expertise. But again, if you want to get into the weeds or even look at the fact sheet version, if you go to rethinktrade.org, we have everything from fact sheets to the website showing all these corporate advisors to long reports, what, me what it means for privacy, for anti-monopolies, for workers, and for AI regulation and civil rights. And all you need to do is just call your members of Congress. And literally, all you need to say is, hey, I now am understanding the big tech lobbyists are trying to rig the new trade agreements. Can you please contact on my behalf the Biden administration's trade negotiators and make sure that you, they know you want your ability 
to save us from these abuses. They want specifically rules, with regard to AI. Rigged rules. Say again. Specifically with regard to AI, or more generally. The sneak attack is broad. This mm -hmm. recent report is just on AI. There are really three different rules. One is the secrecy rules, which would undermine AI regulation. One is the corporate control over the data, mm -hmm. which would undermine privacy and data security regulation. And one is some very stealthy anti-monopoly anti rules that would forbid the kind of laws other countries have passed and Congress is looking to pass that, for instance, just make things fair, like the App Store bill in the Senate, which says you can't have a monopoly or a duopoly on app stores. You should be able to pay for the apps you want, not just using Apple Pay or Google Pay, right. where they can you know, take the money away from you as a consumer and from the app developer. Or you should have the ability to know when you're getting a search response on an Amazon. Are they self-preferencing? Not allowed. Are they monopolizing the market by only putting their goods forward? The most basic monopoly bills would be made illegal trade barriers. Basically, anything that has a disparate impact, even if it's because something is big, that it happens to be foreign, it's a trade barrier. It's an outrageous proposal. So those three things keep popping up. The industry wants to slip them in. Folks like Senator Warren and Senator Klobuchar and, frankly, you know, Lena Khan, the chair of the Federal Trade Commission, they're following this and they find it and they get it pulled out. And then the lobbyists try and get it stuck in someplace else. <laughs> so, again, for everyone to call the members of Congress, everyone should have this number. It's the Capitol switchboard. Two o. Go ahead. And just say, hey, contact the administration. Keep us safe from the so-called digital trade sneak attack. There you go. 202-224-3121 or 225-3121. They both work. Lori Wallach, uh, the RethinkTrade.org uh, uh, director. Lori, thanks so much for dropping Thank you. It's always great talking with you. We'll be right back.